Hey guys, welcome to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess. If you are new here, I am so glad that you're here. And if you're not new here, I'm so glad that you're back. Today, I want to make a case for gardening. I've been gardening for the better part of my adult life. It is a huge passion for me, and I would say in the top three of things that has enriched my life and changed it for the better. So of course, when you experience something amazing, you wanna share about it with people. And that is ultimately a big part of why I have this YouTube channel and why I share this, because I want other people to experience the deep sense of joy and satisfaction that I have experienced in gardening. Now this isn't the first time I've made a case for gardening, but I know that right now all over our hemisphere, people are in the throes of winter, they're pulling out their seed catalogs, they're considering, and they're about to start seeing products pop up on the shelves of the box stores that are all plant related. And people are thinking, hmm, maybe I should grow a garden this year. And I just wanted to make a video to tell you, yes, yes, you should. <laughs> Now in the summer, I might take you through my garden and it might be a very convincing tool, but in the winter, I can't say that it really has a whole lot going for it to show you exactly what you have to look forward to. Now I could bring you into my lovely high tunnel and show you all of this lush green here in the midst of the gray winter. And this might be enough to convince you to want to garden. And I could definitely show you clips from the summer garden of the mass amount of harvest that we brought in. Because I mean, who doesn't love a good haul video? It's so encouraging to see what is potentially possible. However, I don't actually think the harvest is the best reason to garden. And I encourage people whenever they decide to start gardening, don't say, I'm going to grow a garden this year. Don't say, I'm going to grow my own food this year. Say, I'm going to become a gardener this year. Because whenever you put your focus on growing as a gardener, you're not going to fail. Um, even if your harvest doesn't come in the way that you hope. The truth is, in gardening, there are always going to be failures. I mean, I've literally grown thousands of pounds of food in my gardening history, and I still complain failed. I grew like three cucumbers this year. There are too many variables outside of your control for the harvest to be the only reason why you garden. Now, I think that if you shoot for becoming a gardener, you will have no shortage of harvest. There are going to be moments that the abundance of it is literally a burden. It's hard work. There's really no instant gratification and you are going to hit moments that you want to quit. I know that really doesn't sound like the best argument in a case for gardening. However, that's the worst of it. And the worst of it is so massively outweighed by the benefit. And I actually really think that if you set your mind that you are growing a gardener instead of trying to grow a harvest, that even the failures will have value. So whenever you wrap your head around the fact that maybe you may harvest more lessons than peppers your first year of gardening, you'll stick it out to the second year where you may be completely overwhelmed by peppers. A lot of people have success in their early parts of gardening, but I would say that it takes maybe two or three years to really have your head around it. Whenever I talk to people who've been gardening for three years, the amount of confidence they have in the fact that this stuff wants to grow, the amount of reassurance that they are able to find that there's always next year, people in their third year just seem to be very grounded as gardeners. And they're way more comfortable going after the garden without just the harvest in mind. I mean, the harvest is also very enticing. Take a look at this sweet little baby cabbage. Doesn't that make you want to plant a seed? Into tunnel number two. Take a look at those cute little Brussels sprouts. So my first official argument for gardening is for health, but not necessarily just in the way that you think. Sure, eating vegetables can be very healthy for your body, but also hard work is really good for your body. You know, I'm talking about the failures and the fact that it may kick your butt sometimes to the point that you might want to quit, but you're going to become stronger, you're going to become more capable, and you're going to have this sense of accomplishment and pride that honestly, in our world of instant gratification, we don't always get the opportunity to experience. I am a person that has dealt with a lot Lot of anxiety and nervousness and fear in my life. At one point, I would even say that it was pretty crippling. I had a hard time going into public spaces without having noise blockers in my ears. I had such a hard time just functioning in a day-to-day -day way. Getting into the garden has brought such a sense of grounding and peace to me. For me, the greatest reassurance is taking part in this process that just works. Seeds want to grow. Plants want to grow. They want to produce. Produce. They're made to do that and just kind of taking my part in the orchestration of this beautiful creation has brought me such a sense of peace and security on a mental level. 
And on top of that, my body is way, way stronger than it was before I ever gardened. I'm way more capable. I do deal with some pretty crippling health issues and have throughout my life. And I cannot imagine where I would be at almost 40 had I not taken this route, had I gone a more mainstream sedentary life that did not involve nourishing food and hard work I, I would probably be way, way more hindered than I am by the health issues that I deal with. And I, I put the emphasis on health first because we all live in a society that is really rough on us mentally and physically. The way that we do things with food, with screens, with social media, it's just wearing. It's hard to navigate. And I think a lot of people think, I want to get more healthy. And so they start looking at dieting and gym regimens. And while those things aren't inherently bad, a lot of times the health you are looking for is actually on a much deeper level. And while gardening is not a magic cure, I do think think it provides an opportunity for us to really use our minds and our bodies in a way that they were intended to be used. I would love to see people be able to reach the sense of peace and health that I have found in the garden. Along with the holistic approach to well-being that gardening really provides, there's also this a really deep sense of pride. I really can't tell you how many times I've come and I've pulled a bit of food out of the ground and been like, I grew this. I'll be standing in my kitchen cooking something and just amazed. I grew this. One of my favorite things every single year, it never grows old. You know, we come into January, we, we shop for seeds, we make a plan. In February, March, April, we're starting seeds, we begin sowing things, we're moving plants out into the garden. By about June or July, the garden's really rocking and rolling, the plants are huge, and I always take the time to go and I lay down in the garden rows, just surrounded by all these plants, and I just realized that not six months before, this whole thing was just a dream. Five months before, it was a handful of seeds. And with just a little bit of intention and partnership for me, it turns into this massive thing that sustains my family throughout the year. That's incredible to me. And again, I'm afraid that we don't really have a lot of opportunity for that kind of accomplishment. We live in such an instant gratification society, a fast food world where you go through a drive through you turn on the microwave, you want something, you click a button and it's at your doorstep in two days. And while there's definitely convenience in that, I promise you there is something extremely valuable about something that you have to work for and that you have to wait for. And the garden will definitely force you into that. My next two points go hand in hand and they both kind of have to be discussed together. First, I want to talk to you about thriving and then I want to talk to you about surviving. So I started my YouTube channel in 2000. 15 initially and then I really started posting regularly in 2018 sharing garden tours and all the processes of what we were doing here on our farm and at that time there was definitely a, a, a very mixed demographic. I had a lot of people who were hobby gardeners, definitely some people in like the prepper crowd and homesteading crowd looking for sustainability, some permaculturalists, though really at that time I wasn't doing any sort of permaculture practices so I didn't really have a lot of people like that but then COVID happened and when COVID happened a lot of people got really afraid because they saw empty grocery store shelves for the very first time and they also had a lot of time on their hands because they were stuck at home with nothing to do and it was springtime so there was this massive massive wave this influx into gardening which I celebrated and I still do but it really begged the question are we doing this for survival or are we doing this to thrive because a lot of people came in looking for a way to survive they became aware of our broken food system I want to get to the topic about survival and I want to talk really frankly about that but first I want to encourage you in something I grow a garden first and foremost so that I can thrive, not so that I can survive. It's kind of like what I was talking about, focusing on becoming a gardener and knowing that the harvest is going to fall within that goal. If you, if you go after being a gardener, you'll get plenty of food in the meantime. Whereas if you go after just getting the food, if you fail, you may quit trying to become a gardener. And I feel like thriving and surviving kind of works like that. So first, I really want to talk to you about thriving because ultimately that's why I'm growing food. Look at this kale, isn't it beautiful? It's called peacock kale. It's actually often used in uh, landscaping because it's so lovely and ornate with the purple ribbing and these really beautiful purple inner leaves, but it's also fully edible and you can grow it just like any other kale. Cut it up and use it in soups, roast it for kale chips, crush it with some avocado and olive oil and lemon juice to make a really lovely salad. You can't go 
buy peacock kale at the grocery store. In fact, in most grocery stores, you can't buy most of the things that you can grow in a garden. When I first started gardening, I started growing just like the basic plants you could buy at the store and started plants like yellow squash and green zucchini and red tomatoes and just your regular old kale. And I got really discouraged because I was working so hard to grow this food and then I would go to the store and I would see the very th same things that I was toiling over in my garden for like 78 cents a pound at the grocery store and it was super discouraging. And then I found my first heirloom seed catalog and I realized that the world was my oyster when it came to growing beautiful things. I like to say grow something lovely. I, I really think that gardens, though we can view them as a utilitarian thing, we can view them simply as a way to feed our family and make our bodies healthy and all of that. And that's good. Viewing them for sustainability may be enough for you. But I had to overcome being a suburban raised millennial that had never really done really hard physical labor in my life. I had to overcome some very sad habits, a lot of anxiety, and I needed something more to entice me to get in the garden and work my tail off. And so growing something lovely for me made it something sustainable. It actually made it a valid way for me to feed my family because I knew that if I did not work hard for what I was growing that I would never get to experience. I couldn't just go buy it at the store for 79 cents a pound. And that's really when I learned the trick that I want to put my efforts towards thriving in life. I want to eat food that you can't commonly eat. I want to experience a lifestyle that you don't just experience by going the path of least resistance. And that again, I'm tying it back to the sense of pride and accomplishment that we don't readily get the opportunity to experience in an instantly gratifying world. I want delayed gratification. I want to grow something lovely. I want to be able to go out and sit in my garden and be surrounded by this beautiful organic ecosystem and eat food that I know has never been touched by chemicals. And so like I am a growing gardener, not just after a harvest, but after an overall purpose in my life, I am also after thriving. And I would encourage you to set that as your big case for gardening. Do it because you want to thrive. Oh, check this out. We just dug up this big horseradish root and now we gotta get a shovel and <laughs> look how big it is. This is gonna be so much horseradish. We're gonna move it out of these beds that'll probably grow here forever. That's exciting. That's food and medicine. All right, now we have to have the conversation about survival, surviving, the victory garden, the fact that food is freedom. I don't always have this conversation. Not because I think that it is an inferior pursuit. I think food security for your family may be one of the greatest pursuits that you can put your life towards. It's huge, it's incredible. It's not a common part of our culture and our society um, just because most of us have grown up in the world of grocery stores and the idea of really needing to physically work for food security is somewhat foreign to us even though 100 years ago it really wasn't. The reason I don't always talk about it is because when you start talking about food security, it begs the question, why would you need it? And when people start asking that question, a lot of times it induces a lot of fear. And I definitely think fear is an inferior motivator. I always want to focus on inspiration, joy, peace, thriving, fulfillment, because those things will actually motivate you to be way more secure than fear ever could. With that being said, truths are truths. Right now, it's a sunny day, as you see by the light that's shining on my face. And I could go out on a sunny day, and I could say, it's not sunny. I could say, it's dark. And even if my eyes were squinting, and even if I was breaking a sweat, uh, I wouldn't today because it's a cold sunny day. Let's say it's summertime. If I were out on a sunny summer day, and I had a tank top on and some shorts and I was insisting that it was dark. I could go through that day to a certain point and maybe even believe what I was insisting on. But at some point, my skin would start to burn because even if you insist that it's dark, if you stand in the sunshine, you could get a sunburn because the truth is it's a sunny day. Our food system is really broken. The average American has three days of food in their house. Most people are living in such a way that if the grocery store supply chain somehow fell through, they would be in a world of trouble. And beyond that, most people 
don't know how to garden. And this is why when I talk about survival and preparedness, I actually don't like that route is the greatest case for gardening because I've seen in a lot of preparedness groups and survival groups, a lot of people are planning their bug out bags and they're buying their emergency seed vaults, but they've never grown a garden. And a big thing is, is if you actually want to be in a position to be self-sufficient and have food freedom and food security, you're gonna need to know what to do with those seeds. So that's why I think that it's important that we talk about that now. I'm not talking about like societal collapse, though I kind of like reading World War II books and I kind of like reading post dystopian novels and all of these different things. Like I, I kind of like imagining, well, what would I do in a situation like that? Um, as long as it's not making me fearful. If I ever were to be getting into a place of fear, I would not want to do that. There are also a lot of other reasons why it's important to have some skills and have more than three days worth of food in your house. For instance, job loss, unforeseen circumstances, inflation, things like COVID where supply chains are messed up, storms. Just since I started living a more prepared life, I have seen so many instances through social media of people dealing with two week power outages after a hurricane and literally not having food to feed their kids. Right now of people dealing with really quickly rising rent costs and not having a budget that they can stretch at the grocery store to buy the things that they need. And I think that we have discounted the need for food security because we've lumped everything in as if talking about security and survival was all about societal collapse when in actuality it's just wisdom to be able to grow your own food. And as soon as I start talking about the need for food security, the need for food freedom, the need to take the bull by the horns and say I'm not going to depend on everybody else to make sure that my family's fed, I'm going to do something about it. There are people who go, but I live in an apartment, but I'm retired, but I'm this, but I'm that. I can't, I can't, I can't. Okay. Granted, I know that that's true. I've been in positions in my life that I could do very, very little towards this. I still gain the skills, finding the skills. And even if you're just growing a couple pots on a patio, even if you're just doing a four by four garden, this is why I don't like fear as a motivator because fear will tell you your, your four by four garden will do nothing for you. But inspiration, motivation, and wisdom will tell you, hey, you are learning skills that if there were ever a need, you would have them. And maybe you are in a place where you really can't do much of anything you need people who can to do. Because if everybody who could grow a garden and grow some food did, we wouldn't be in the precarious situation that we're in. And if you do any study of history at all, you know that food equals freedom. I went into the grocery store yesterday and I saw a display of kale. I took a picture of it because each little bunch of kale, I don't know, five leaves, was something like $2.97. And I've got a whole bed of kale growing. All of a sudden I felt like I'm kale rich. And when I first started gardening, kale did not cost $2.97. You could easily buy a bunch of kale for something like 70 cents. So there's this meme that goes around every year about the $287 tomato or something like that. Basically, uh, it's a joke about how much of an investment it takes to get into gardening and how little it oftentimes yields, especially in the beginning. And I think that if you were to look at your early years of gardening and try to quantify the value of gardening based on your failures or the things that were not wildly successful, sure, you could discount it. The thing is, though, is that you don't stay there. And the value of the food that you're able to grow in your home, it really cannot be compared to that which is being sold for 79 cents a pound at the grocery store or even $2.97 a bundle at the grocery store. Because even with organic labeling, we really don't know what's going on in that food. And there are a lot of things that happen in the food industry that are really not for our health. Over the last 70 to 80 years, humanity has seen an influx of using chemical pesticides, chemical fertilizers, completely over farming our soils and not caring for the health of our soils. The focus has 100% been on the harvest and the bottom dollar. And with that being the case, we, the consumers, are eating food that is essentially a science experiment. And further advancements are being made where labeling is not clear about bioengineered ingredients. It's become more and more vague. Foods are being bioengineered to be able to be sprayed with gobs of poisons and still grow. Soil is being massively depleted, meaning that a lot of the food that we do buy really doesn't have the nutritional value that it could if it were grown in healthy soil. And all while this is going on, cancer rates and diseases are going through the roof. And if you speak up about it, 
People want to argue with you about the validity of genetically modifying things and how this is all just conspiracy. And to that I would say, just go out in public and look around. Humanity is getting sicker day by day and getting more dependent on a very, very broken food system. The value of what you can grow at home and guarantee that you know what's in it, the soil that you can create to make more nutritious and nourishing food, the peace of mind that the things that you're feeding your baby are not sprayed with some unknown chemical that could be damaging their gut and hurting their body. All of that is worth it. Now, I'm not trying to make a case for a $287 tomato. I've never grown one of those. In fact, when I look over the last decade and a half of gardening for me, I would say that the food that I grow is incomparable to anything that I could buy at the grocery store and I get it for a fraction of the price. And that's with building fancy, beautiful, extensive gardens. When I look at a jar of spaghetti sauce that's $8 because it's non-GMO and doesn't have a bunch of corn syrup added to it, I know that I can make a better product at home for a heck of a lot less than $8. But the peace of mind that I absolutely know what is in our food is priceless. The peace of mind that comes with the freedom that is the skill to grow food and the established soil and the spaces to do it is priceless. And while I really don't like harping on about the problem because I I don't think that it ultimately leads to a solution. I also don't want to stand out in the blaring sun with people insisting that it's dark, watching them get a sunburn and acting like that's okay. If you have felt even a little bit, that you should start growing a garden, even if it's small, even if it's in a pot or in containers, on a patio, in a neighborhood, if you just wanna till up a plot. If you have felt that inkling and that gut feeling that maybe that's something that you wanna do, just do it. The number of people here on my platform that have come to me and said, oh, I just really feel like this is something I'm supposed to do. I never had an interest in it. And then all of a sudden I just have this desire to. Maybe we should stop trying to argue ourselves out of the desires of our heart and we should just do them. What do you think your, your life is going to get worse because you grow a garden? It's not. And while I definitely do not like to give fear any value as a motivator, I will tell you that I don't experience it nearly as much with the established security in place that I know how to grow food and that I don't have to buy $3 bunches of kale and $8 jars of spaghetti sauce. So that is my honest and real case for gardening. It's the reason why I do it and it's the reason why I think that if it's something that somebody has interest in, they should definitely put the effort into doing it. I'd love to know what your case for gardening is, how it has changed your life. And for those of you who have gardened before, any words of encouragement that you may have for a new gardener or someone on the fence deciding whether they want to take the plunge into the soil. I'd love for you to share those in the comments down below. I will be, as always, sharing my gardening experience this year, um, teaching you guys how-tos, lessons. We're going to start seed shopping soon, uh, seed starting, turning this space into something lush and beautiful, bringing in the harvest, showing you guys what to do with it. I do have a, a lot of resources. I've been making content here for consistently the last six years about gardening and homesteading and growing food. I've written a couple of books about it. I'll put some links in the description down below if you're looking for what's next. Please do subscribe and join me here on this journey. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.